Hi, in this tutorial, I walk you through how to create this landscape. So stick around until the end. To generate landscapes, we'll need a specific software. I prefer using World Creator. We could use other methods, like using Blender itself, but I think this option is better. You could use World Machine instead, but World Creator is more professional and user-friendly. You can choose from these pre-made landscapes. I'll select one. Let's go with this one. The scene is ready. I won't go into detail about this software. Instead, I'll focus on the essentials. You can rotate the camera by right-clicking and move around the scene using the W, A, S, and D. Rendering the scene takes several seconds to complete. As you can see, the level of detail is impressive. Alright, let's go over the settings. These options affect both the train and the weather. The precision setting will affect the train size. This value is adequate for my needs. This section allows me to adjust the lighting, camera settings, post-processing and more. This section deals with exporting and I'll cover it in more detail later. In the biomes you can add additional properties to your train. Let's disable the current layer. We can see any material now. Let's add a new biome by clicking the add biome. This is the new layer, much like the layers you'd use in Substance Painter or Photoshop. With the style option, you can adjust the appearance of the new biome. You'll find a list of landscape attributes. For example, let's select dunes. The entire shape has altered. Let's select a different type. All right, let's skip the other properties and disable this layer. In the main layer, the first property controls the color of each area on the landscape. You can adjust the colors according to your preferences. The next section deals with filters. This section allows you to modify the landscape shape in detail, and it's the most important one. All of these layers contribute to the landscape. For instance, let's disable the erosion layer. You can notice the changes. Now let's disable the other attributes. A lot of details have been removed. Now let's add a new filter. For instance, we can use the Sorrel filter. You can see how the shape has changed and it looks great. All the materials and other details are still intact. Additionally, you can adjust the properties of each filter. You can adjust the strength of the filter with this option or invert the filter by selecting invert. All right, let's add another filter. For example, ballot. All right, you can alter the entire shape by using this button to select a random seat. You can generate an endless variety of shapes and keep experimenting until you're satisfied. Now let's move on to the export. Here you can choose options for what you want to export. For instance, I need height map. Next, I need normal map. And then color map or diffuse texture and roughness. And finally, metalness. Additionally, you can choose to export the entire mesh or include custom maps. Before exporting, make sure to adjust the attributes, such as file format, bit depth, and other options. You can also view the preview at the bottom. Here, you can choose the game engine for export and set the naming format for the files. Normal maps are different, PNG format works well for them. Here's the preview. To finish, click the export all button to export all the textures. Alright, it's time to get to work with Blender. I'm using version 4.2. I don't need this cube, let's take a look at the textures. As you can see, I'll be using 4K resolution. The textures include diffuse, height, normal and roughness, although roughness is useless. Press Shift A, navigate to Mesh and add a plane object. Press S to scale it up. 
navigate to the modifiers panel and add a subdivision surface modifier. This modifier increases the number of subdivisions. Select simple and then increase the levels. Next, add a displace modifier to apply the height map to the mesh. Click new, set the coordinates to UV and then navigate to the texture section. Here I need to import height map. Click open and navigate to the textures path. Note that the texture is loaded. Set the color space to non-color. Grayscale textures should be set to non-color. Next, adjust the levels to achieve the desired shape. Next, disable the grids to get a clearer view of the result. For more details on displacement, check out the tutorial here. The details look good, but are not clear up close. I'll increase the levels by one more unit. Note that it looks better. Right click on the mesh and choose shade smooth. It looks much better now. Next, let's create the material. Open a shader editor window. Then create a new material. The default shader is principal BSDF. Drag the diffuse texture in. Connect the diffuse shader to the base color input. Now activate render mode. I've chosen Eevee. For a complete tutorial on Eevee, you can watch it here. Press Z and select render to view the results. I have a point light in the scene that I don't need. Let's remove it. Next, we need to add a global light source, like a sun or a HDRI. Let's use a HDRI for this scene. In the shader editor window, let's select world section. Press Shift A and search for the environment texture node. Press open and import the HDRI. I've downloaded these textures from HDRI Haven. Then let's connect it to the color pin. Press Ctrl T on the texture to add the texture coordinate node. I want to change the light direction. I need to adjust the light direction along the Z axis. This value looks good now. Next, let's adjust the landscape material. Start by increasing the roughness. Low roughness values can make the surface look wet. Next, add a touch of metallic to the material. After that, include the normal map. Let's drag it into the project. Set the color space of the normal map to known color. The same as the displacement. Next, add a normal map node and connect the normal map texture to it. Finally, connect it to the normal pin. Now it has more details. In EVNX, I can enable additional features like ray tracing. This feature enhances shadows and global illumination. For a detailed explanation, check out the EVNX tutorial. After making some adjustments, let's examine the landscape up close. At close distances, the quality looks good, as you can see. Adding micro details to the material can enhance the appearance of close up details. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions and ideas, feel free to share them in the comments.